Yeah, so the professor sent me a text on Tuesday night asking if I wanted to give a talk about my story, and one that didn't give me much time to prepare or something, so I apologize if the delivery is a little rough. Uh, but it's something I want to talk about because the class you're in and what he teaches is something I'm very passionate about. Uh, but when he sent me a text, it made me think of a text message my brother sent me a few months ago. And he sent me a text and said, this is so Kevin Stock, and he linked an article. So I'm like, all right, what is so me? So I click on it, and it's a letter from Hunter S. Thompson. Does anyone know who that is? He's a famous American writer. Uh, but at the time, Hunter S. Thompson, that he wrote this letter, he wrote it to a friend, and Hunter S. Thompson was 22 years old. And his friend was asking him for life advice, basically. He said, well, you know, what's the purpose? Where do I find meaning? You know, basically, what should I do with my life? And he's asking his friend, Hunter S. Thompson, who's 22 years old, uh, and Hunter S. Thompson started, so he wrote this letter to his friend, and it's like, the first, he starts like, this is a trap, like, who am I to give you advice? Like, I'm 22, what do I know? And that's kind of like how I felt when, when he asked me to give this talk. Like, what, what advice do I have to, you, to give to you guys, you know? Uh, it's kind of like the blind leading the blind. But anyways, I thought about it, and I was like, if I was sitting where you were sitting, you know, just 10 years ago maybe, uh, if you guys are in your early 20s, I'm in my early 30s, some of you, I know, there's a little age differences, but uh, I was like, well, I would want to know basically three things, I think, when I was sitting in your place. And ironically enough, these are three things that Hunter S. Thompson told his friend. Uh, and it's kind of summarized in this, this, uh, for, this life formula that Hunter wrote to his, uh, to his friend. And it says... A man must choose a path which will let his abilities function at a maximum efficiency toward the gratification of his desires. Now, that's like a mouthful. But I, I kind of want to unpack that because I think that's the essence of maybe what we're all after. And at 22, I think he had some words of wisdom. So that's what I wish I would have I read this sentence when I was your age, sitting where you were. Because these are three lessons I kind of learned the hard way. Uh, and, you know, maybe you can learn from my mistakes. Uh, or, you know, learn to embrace them if you make them yourself. But anyways, uh, I'm going to start with the first thing in his, uh, you know, his formula, his path. Okay, so we got a path. In the path, this is like a circle, okay? We have abilities. And we have desire. Whoops. All right, you get the point. <laughs> These three things are, are reinforcing, okay? So let's start with path. Uh, because this is the most important thing I found. You, you're going to create a life by default or by design. Most people create a life by default. Uh, I liken it to like sleepwalking down a path. It's like life circumstances dictate where you go, what job you get, what you end up doing. Few people take the time to sit and say... I'm going to design my life because this is what I want to do. Uh, so the most important thing, I think, and I'm gonna, we're going to come back to path here in a second, or at, towards the end. Uh, but the most important thing, I think, is to choose to design your life on purpose and not by default. Because if, if you take that one step, you're separated from 99% of the world. Because most people just live a life of default. Okay, so for example, when I was... You know, we, we live in a society of things you're supposed to do. Whether it's from society or your parents. For example, I went to a good high school. My parents expected me to get good grades, so I worked hard and got good grades. I was expected to go to college, so I went to college. I studied chemistry and biology. Not because I liked them, but that was kind of something like I was expected to do. Uh, I went to professional school. I went to dental school, became a dentist. And it's not that I didn't have a choice in that, but I didn't actively design that path. It was something I kind of fell into. And I didn't start to wake up from this sleepwalking path until I got into dental school and I asked myself, is this really what I want to do? Do I want to sit in a dental chair and do fillings and tooth extractions five days a week for the next 40 years? And the answer to that question was no. Uh, so, but and I'll come back to this in, towards the end, but I just think the most important thing early on is to realize you can create your own path, that you can pave your own way. And you don't have to settle on what your parents expect of you or what society expects of you. Uh, and so we'll come back around to that. Because 
the next thing that I think where everything starts is desire. Okay, so if you're going to choose a path, right, and maybe uh, you're like, well, okay, there's infinite paths you can take. How do you decide what path to take? How do you carve out your own path? And I think it all starts with desire. Uh, if you ask someone what they want to do in three years, in five years, like where do they see themselves in three, five, ten years, like almost no one will have an answer for you. Uh, so I think the most important thing is to figure out what you want. And this is a loaded question because what you want today is going to be different from what you want in three years and it's going to be different from what you want in five years and ten years. Uh, but getting clear on what things you might want now, I think, is one of the most important things you can do at this stage uh, in life. I wish someone had told me that. So I remember a day when my life kind of, I'm not going to say it was like an epiphany day where my entire life changed, but I specifically remember, I was so out of dental school, and I'll come back to this, but I started my own dental sleep medicine practice. It's a niche area of dentistry, uh, and that's when I, was, I, I started to choose my own path, finally. And I'm sitting there at this desk, waiting on a patient. Uh, it, was a, it was a business of one. I was the dentist and the custodian and the marketer and the web designer. Uh, but anyways, I'm sitting there, and I think my patient was, was no-showing me. You know? they, they weren't there. So I was just kind of dreaming, and I was like, you know, if I could be anywhere right now doing anything, if money was no object, if my abilities were no object, like if I could do anything, like would I be sitting right here doing what I'm doing? And of course the answer was no. It was like, I'd, I'd much rather be doing this or this or this or this. But I let myself dream a little bit because my patient wasn't there, wasn't showing up. And so I thought, I'm like, well, what would an ideal day look like for me? What would an ideal week look like? What would an ideal month and an ideal year? And, you know, I just started putting things together like this imaginary fantasy fairy tale life. Uh, and I remember asking myself, well, it's like, okay, why. Why don't I live that life? Like, why don't I do this crazy fairy tale life? And I got like two possibilities why I'm not living that. One is it's a fairy tale, like it's impossible, right? Like, yeah, it's impossible. Uh, and then the second thing was, well, what if it is possible? Then it would be fear. But I want to unpack these two things together. So I don't buy into it's not possible very often. Like most anything, and it sounds cliche, but I think it's possible. Uh, I was fortunate enough when I started to wake up and choose my own path, I got into reading a lot of books. And I would read a lot of books on just uh, biographies. So a, a good example is, anyone know Richard Branson is? He's like the face of entrepreneurs in the world, okay? He has multiple billion dollar companies. He owns hundreds of companies under this umbrella Virgin Group. You might have heard of like Virgin America, uh, Virgin Record Company was what he's most known for early on. But anyways, so I was I read I was reading a you know Richard Branson's story. He doesn't have like a high school degree. He doesn't have connections. He wasn't privileged, and he now runs multiple billion dollar companies. And it's like if like if if something was impossible, I'd be like it would have been impossible for this guy. He he on top of that, he lives in a remote island. He barely knows how to use the internet, and he's running multiple billion dollar companies. Like like how does that happen? It's all might be like luck. And I'd be like, well, okay, maybe luck if you did one billion dollar company or two, but he's got like multiple. I'm like, so if he could do it, why, why wouldn't someone else like myself who's been privileged, educated, you know, all these things that probably had more connections than he had at the time, why wouldn't I be able to do it? And I'm telling you this because the more biographies I read, the more things where if you told me you wanted to do whatever or that would be an ideal, I can find someone who had a situation who had worse circumstances, less ability, and then did what you wanted to do. So the idea of something being impossible to me, it's like, I can just look at, I can give you examples in almost any area of anything. Like I think of Taylor Swift often, because she's like, a, like the pop superstar of the world. And you know, I think she's very talented, of course. But her voice is like, when people would say, it's nothing like extraordinary. You know, we can go in St. Louis and probably find, you know, tens if not hundreds or thousands of people that have a voice at least equal to Taylor Swift. Okay, so this idea of impossibility, I was like, okay, I ruled that out. So let's go back to me fantasizing this life. Uh, okay, so this life, it is 
a fantasy, but it, I guess it's probably possible, right? So why would I not be living that life? And so the next answer is fear. And I think this is where most people get stuck. Because uh, it's the fear of failure, but really what I think the fear is the fear of loss of what you have versus what you can gain. Because, uh, for example, I was 26 years old. I had spent most of my life working hard to get through high school and get through college, get through dental school, and finally I became a dentist, and most people would be like, you finally made it, right? You live in the greatest country in the world, you have a respectable profession, you never have to worry about money again, you can, you know, basically you, you have life by the horns, right? Uh, and so what happens, I think, is good can be the enemy of great, meaning like, yeah, that's, if I go for this other thing, what if I lose this that I've worked so hard to get to, right? Uh, and I think it's the fear that people are afraid of losing what they have in order to go for what they actually want. Uh, so my thought is, if, so, if you got very clear on what you want, it could be a fantasy life, just dream to content. And then if you convince yourself that it is possible, and I, I believe you can do that, I think books are a powerful way to do that, and read about people that have done it. Uh, and then you're not afraid to give up what you have uh, for this life, well then, we can get to this next part of the cycle. And that's abilities. Because the next excuse people will have is, well, I don't have the ability to do, run that business or, you know, sing that, become a pop star, whatever it is. I don't have the ability, right? And this is gonna sound super cliche, but I truly believe each one of you, myself included, like we have far more ability than, than we believe, than, than, we, than we know. And I'm gonna give you an example because most of my life, I've spent being, like I told you, geared toward like the math and sciences because that's what society is going to reward. That's how you, you get into professional school. That's how you become a dentist. That's how you're going to make the money. Uh, that's how you're going to be on that path that you're supposed to be on. You know, buy the house, find the wife, have the kids, the white picket fence, save a little money, retire, and then die. Well, I didn't. I I, I got off that path. Uh, but this brings me back to like if you, if you. Uh, I have no ability when it comes to arts and sciences, right? No natural ability. I, I can't draw a stick figure. Uh, don't know how to play a musical instrument. And so I, I always think, like, those are things you're kind of born with or you're not. And I decided to challenge that idea because I actually don't believe that. Uh, so this year, 2019, I had a New Year's resolution. that I was like, I'm going to learn how to draw this year. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend at least five minutes, five days a week. Now, that's not a lot of time. Five minutes, five days a week practicing drawing, right? So I get two days off a week where I just don't have to do it. Uh, but the other five days, I got to spend at least five minutes. And I can spend more if I want, but at least five minutes, okay? So I want to show you, before I started this, I did. I spent a lot of time on this self-portrait, all right? And this is, this is what the self-portrait looked like. I don't know, can you guys see it? Yeah. It's not that good. All right, I, it's, not, it's not a lot of natural ability there. Uh, granted. Granted, it's not, it's not, it's not that, I, and I spent time on it. I was like, look, I'm going to do the best I can, uh, and then we'll, we'll see where I get to it by the end of the year. So, what, we're in November. I probably average about 10 minutes a day, five days a week. So less than an hour a week I spend practicing drawing. Uh, and so what, that, that's about 40 hours. That's about one work week, right? So this is the portrait I'm currently working on. I'll, I'll probably finish it this week or something like that. Uh, but it's like... Significantly better, right? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's less than one work week of practicing drawing. Like, and then I think, I'm like, what if I spent an hour a day? Like, just one hour a day drawing. Like, people would might be actually be like, oh, he has a natural art ability. When really, like, look, I have no natural art ability. If there's anything, yeah, yeah. My brother's really good at art. He drew me when I was little. And he, he was doing graphic design and never went for it. Did, did you think like he has natural ability? Because there are people that have natural ability. natural ability. There are people that have natural ability. This is what I think natural ability is. It's like having a 10 second head start when you're running a marathon. Like it's nothing. Like you're running a marathon, okay? Like life is a marathon. Natural ability will give you that you know, 10 second head start. Uh, which look, you can obviously, like I had, I had no natural artistic ability at all. And then like just 40 hours, like one week of drawing, it's like, hey, I learned, you know, I could draw. People that saw this, like this was the first time I drew something, people would be like, you are a natural, right? 
but I, but obviously, clearly not a natural. Uh, <laughs> and so I just say that because we think our abilities uh, limit, you know, what path we can take. And I, 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 I would argue that, you know, if you get clear on your desire, these abilities are going to develop with you. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, abilities of running a business or, you know, whatever you want to do, uh, these will follow desire. So desire is first, abilities will happen, and that's when you choose a path, okay? So if the circle's reinforcing, uh, I wanted to mention something about abilities uh, because I thought there's something I discovered about myself that took me a long time to figure out. And that's that I can't be happy doing any, any one thing. And it sounds like a weird statement. Uh, but let me explain. So when I was in dental school, and I, told, I asked myself that question, am I going to be happy sitting in a dental chair doing fillings and extractions five days a week for the next 40 years? And that answer was no. What I didn't realize at the time was that answer was no for everything. Meaning, for example, I love to work out. I've been working out for a long time. It's something I, I love doing. Uh, I love doing it one hour a day. I would hate doing it eight hours a day. I love reading. I love reading one hour a day. I would hate to read eight hours a day. Uh, I love writing. I love writing about one to two hours a day. I would hate to write eight hours a day. I love running this business that I'm gonna tell you about uh, just because it's another example of like just good things coming out of bad things. But so I run this business, and if you run a business, it's all encompassing. Forty hours a week plus forty hours a week on top of that for most of the time. But I knew if I do that, I'm going to be unhappy. I don't want to do that. So you know, I brought on a couple of, uh, partners who now run most of the business, so I can do it one to two hours a day. And I'm telling you this because. When you're determining your path, and it goes back to this statement that Hunter S. Thompson said. He said, a man, and of course he means a man or a woman, must choose a path which lets his abilities function at a maximum towards the gratification of his desires. I know my abilities cannot function at a maximum if I'm sitting somewhere eight hours a day doing that every day. For me to, uh, to maximize my abilities, I need to do many different things for shorter amount of times. I felt guilty about that initially. Uh, because I felt like it's like, oh, he's unfocused, or he's not really committed to this. Uh, and you know, if I tell people like the, all the things I do every day, they're like, you got ADHD, you need to be on medication. Like that's probably why we need to medicate everyone. But it's like, I actually don't think it's like a bad thing. I just noticed that about myself, that for me, I don't fit into society's nine to five, five days a week. Now, on the flip side, I'm gonna tell you about uh, Senna. I watched a documentary uh, not too long ago. It's called Senna. He's a famous race car driver, one of the best ever. And I'm not into race car driving, but someone told me to watch it. I'm glad I did. Uh, because one thing stood out in the movie, and that was Senna, I mean, all he wanted to do every day was race, drive his race car. And when he wasn't driving, he was thinking about driving. When he was sleeping, he was dreaming about driving. Like, it was all he wanted to do. And you know, I used to be envious of people like this. Like, that's what I want. I wish there was one thing I could just put down and, you know, that's all I wanted to do. Uh, but I mentioned this because maybe Sen is one extreme, maybe I'm extreme on one extreme, and maybe you're somewhere in the middle. But society tends to want to be able to slap a label on you and say, Kevin, you're a dentist, you are a pop star, you are a business CEO, whatever. Uh, and that's great, and if that's you and there's one thing you love, and I'd say you should go all in on it. But if that's not you, I don't think you should feel guilty about it, but you should learn how you know, to carve your path that a way that's going to maximize your abilities to get the desires that you want, okay? So I, I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but it's that it goes back to carving your own path and you don't have to do what, it took me a long time, you don't have to do what society wants you to do or what you think society wants you to do or what your parents want you to do. You can carve out a very unique path just for yourself, which is, you know, people look at my life and they're like, wow, he does pediatric dentistry a couple days a week part-time, he does writing, he does this and that. I do a lot of different things and it seems like I'm not focused, but that's what works for me. And I just, you need to figure out what works for you. And that's part of carving out your own path, I think. Does that make any sense at all? So, a couple of things that I want to talk about. 
I want to come back to choosing your path because that's I, I think that's really what this class is about is making the conscious decision on choosing your path because it's I remember when I was sitting where you were there's a lot of anxiety around that and I think a lot of the anxiety is you know you're 22 years old or you're 20 years old and so I'm saying okay you need to decide what you want to do the rest of your life I'm like I I don't know what I want to eat for dinner unless nonetheless like what am I going to do the rest of my life. Uh, but for me, some things that brought clarity to that is, one, you can change your mind. The powerful thing that I think you can do now is decide some things that you might want, that might excite you, like the desire. Get that. Like, what if you like, design a fancy life and say, okay, that's something I can, I can work towards. If it changes in three years or in five years, guess what? That's the beauty of life. You can change your mind. This is like an ever-evolving journey that you're on. Uh, but I feel like the problem is most people don't ever start the journey. They don't, they don't carve out their own path, they don't develop their abilities, and they don't really honor any of their desires. So like, if I had a take home message, it would be realize you, you, can, you can live your life the next 80, 100 years by default and say, well, this happened to me, so I guess I gotta do this, this happened to me, so I gotta do that. Or you can actively design your life. Uh, in Hunter S. Thompson's letter to his friend, he was said, you know, you really you have two options. You can float or swim. So float is like just not really having any direction. And by all means, like if you're happy and you love your life and it's perfect just the way it is, float, you know? Enjoy it. Live it up. Enjoy that. But if you're floating and you're getting feeling a little seasick, meaning you know you don't like it that much, well then start swimming. And swimming means you know, figure out what you want, jump on that path, commit to it, and the abilities will develop with it, okay? The, the abilities are not something that, uh, you know, it's kind of like these are the two things and this will happen after you, you settle on these two things. So I hope that makes some sense. There's, there's two things that I, I think uh, that you should embrace. And one is the struggle of the path. Because just because you have desires and you're developing your abilities doesn't mean like it's smooth sailing. Uh, if I reflect on my life, especially the last 10 years, my biggest quote unquote wins have come from like the worst things. So, for example, uh, I started a dental sleep medicine practice out of dental school, which is like a huge risk. Uh, pretty sure no one has ever done that. Like, Dental sleep medicine is something usually, it's like a niche area that someone practices within a dental practice, and not something that a stu dental student just forms out of school. But anyways, I was treating patients, and the, the treatment, these oral devices, they're great for some patients, but they don't work for everyone. And so I had a lot of patients so like, this isn't working, it's causing TMJ problems, they're having problems. Long story short is, it, was, it could have been something where I'm like, man, I started this business and it only kind of works for some people. But instead of doing that, I was like, well, what can I do to make it work for everyone? So I developed this, this basically it's an intranasal device and it's designed to help treat snoring and sleep apnea. And I now have it patented and it's selling. Uh, and I tell you that because some people would see that obstacle and be like, oh goodness. And they would kind of like retreat from it. Instead of like lean into that struggle and say, Maybe there's opportunity in here. Maybe there's something you can do with that. Another example is, so when I was a kid, I was a fat kid. Like I was overweight, very self-conscious about it. And at the time, you know, that's like, was a huge obstacle. It's something that I'd rather not have had to deal with. But because I kind of leaned into that and figured out, oh, this is healthy eating, this is working out. Health and fitness has become a huge part of my life. It's one of the reasons why I went, you know, into the health field in the first place. And so, you know, I tell you these stories to basically to say, if there's pain and struggle in your life, don't like turn a blind eye to that, but look at it, embrace it, say like, what good can come out of this? Because for me, like all the best things have come out of the bad stuff. Like it's a, basically the paradox of life where it's like, the good's gonna come out of the bad, okay? So that would be uh, one thing that I would suggest embracing. And the other thing is like, the ultimate good cliche is like embracing the journey, but Overall, like, your path is going to change. Your, your desires are going to change. Your abilities, you can develop them, uh, different abilities at different times. Like I, you know, I'm not an artist, but I'm developing the ability to do that. Uh, the point is, like, I just think at the end of the day, you should enjoy and embrace the journey. You know, 
you should embrace the good, the bad, because it's going to be both in it. Uh, so that's kind of my spiel. It's what I was thinking about. The, the things that when I was 22, I would have liked someone to say, look, you know, you don't have to do what society expects you to do. You have to do what your parents can do. You can explore your own desires, you know, and you can carve out unique abilities that you may not have right now, and you can go live a life that you make yourself. Or you can just, you know, let life dictate where you go, you know. You can float, let circumstances uh, create your life by default. So those are kind of the three things that I think I've learned over the last 10 years that have been most impactful for me. Uh, I don't know if you have questions or anything else I can explain more clearly. Yep. Kevin, it seems like that your description of past to abilities and desire, the essence of that is passion. Yeah. And finding that passion is really the key to finding the desire, to, to link it to your path, and then find the abilities to do it. Um, so I think that's that's really uh, very insightful to, to really, uh, because that's what starts the fire, is the passion. Yeah, and I think, I think especially as kids, like young adults, I know, I felt that way, I'm like, you know, I had an interest in health and fitness, but that was like it. And so people are like, well, I'm not passionate about anything. How do I find the passion, right? How do I know, like, if I had that fire in me, yeah, I'd jump on the path and I would develop those abilities. But I think, and that's why I think developing passion, it's not, it's not something that you're born with, I don't think. It's something that you create. And so that's why I said it starts with desire. And you can cultivate a passion, meaning if you let yourself dream and say, what might I want? Passion can come from that. If you look and say, what have been the real struggles in my life? What are things that I've overcome? And maybe those things that you, that personal experience, is something that you can help other people with. And a lot of times passion comes from that. Uh, I mean, almost everything I do, especially with health and fitness, is because we come from my personal struggle, what I've learned, and then passion that, you know, help other people and that had those struggles. Uh, so, yeah, I think passion is uh, a, like a vital part, and I also think it's one of the trickier parts. And if you don't have a passion, or if nothing's lighting you up on fire, or you think about what you might want, you're not getting excited. I would say one of two things. One, think bigger. Like, imagine something ridiculous. Get excited about some vision. Like, that's step one. And if you can't do that, my second advice would be, you know, taste as much as you can, meaning like, try things. A lot of people, I mean, if you don't have any experience in anything, especially like, I remember out of high school where you're supposed to decide, what are you going to major in? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know anything. Like, <laughs> I don't know these career paths. And so I think the way you get to know what might be a passion or future desires are try this, try this, try this. And, you know, maybe there's some stigma about trying a bunch of different jobs or being disfocused. But, I, I, you know, one of the things that have helped me the most is really just stop worrying about what other people think. <laughs> you know, live, just live my life. Uh, Based on, based kind of on this formula that Hunter S. Thompson laid out. For clean bathrooms, clean enough bathrooms, you'll find some motivation to do something different. <laughs> you find motivation out of pain. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying the paradox of life, like out of the bad, that's where you find the good, whether it be the motivation or whatnot. So I'm not, I'm not sure if you have any other questions, but I'm happy to tell you more about like my actual path through these things, but I figured that might be boring, so I thought this is what I'd rather know if I were you than, uh, you know, you went to college, you came to dentist, started sleep practice. I didn't mention that this book, another thing, uh, so I wrote this book just on a whim one day. I am not a writer, I told you, like I studied the math and sciences, I went to, uh, you know, I was, I was geared. You, you, you hear you're either math or science or your art or music or whatever, I don't believe that anymore. But I was very much just the science person, not a writer. I'd never written anything in my life. Uh, but I, out of some of these experiences with dental school and deciding to take my own path and kind of go a different way outside the norm and developing this nasal device, 
I kind of, the things I've talked about today, I kind of wrote in this book. And so if you want one of these books, you're more than welcome to it. Uh, but it's just another example of like the struggle and the thought process that came to, you know, carving out my own path, you know, led to another good thing. And you know, I, this book. <laughs> so yeah, you're welcome to the book. Uh, any other questions or anything? Do you all know what you want to do already with, with your lives? It's all clear? Side, there's always something that I'm aware of that, or, you know, I talked about it, like, a key to success is perseverance. And so, to change your mind is, a, I think, a sign of strength. But to change your mind for the right reasons. To change your mind because something is hard is often a bad decision. To change your mind because something isn't right is often a good decision. And, you know, sometimes that line's a little blurry. Uh, but good for you, yeah. I mean, especially, you know, the sunk cost. Is, it's, a, it's an economic term, but it's a, what I described where it's like I spent 26 years of my life working hard to become a dentist, and if I'm just going to give that up, that is a gigantic sunk cost. And to me, the way to get over the fear of going after something that you truly want or versus holding on to what you have because you're afraid of losing it, to me is I fight that fear with fear. Meaning, if I'm afraid to go after this, you know what I'm afraid of more than that? It's the quiet desperation that would result from you know, burning out desire, and burning out the ability to cultivate any more abilities, and just sitting at, in a dental chair doing fillings five days a week. To me, that fear overrides everything else, where if I'm on my deathbed, I'm look like, I didn't go for that desire, I didn't go for to develop these, these latent abilities, uh, but instead I played it safe, to me, that is my that fear overrides every other fear. So that's how I can continually make a decision that looks a little crazy on the outside, giving up that comfortable place for a better place or a more right place is, it's not that I'm courageous or anything like that, it's just I'm more afraid of looking back on my life and saying, man, I wish I would've went for it, I wish I would've done something differently. It's, I think very rarely do people look on their deathbed and be like, you know, I'm really glad I played it safe and didn't go for my dreams or these passions, you know? So I let that fear kind of override all my other fears and it helped, you know, make, move forward in, 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 the, in the direction that I would want to go. Yeah? Uh, I just wanted to uh, speak about passion. When you should be a career path. Yeah. Passion is key. Raising being does. There is no, there's no career that easy. They are all difficult. Believe me. You're going to be you're going to make it. Yep. Basically. I agree. And that's a great point. Because I remember when I was thinking about going to dental school. And the thought process in my mind at the time was dentists make good money. They have good hours. Uh, and they, they do some good, you know, they help people. And so for me, I was like, that seems like a good thing, all right? Sign me up. One thing that I would recommend is choosing a career path based on good hours is like, now to me is the most crazy thing I've ever thought about because when you're choosing a path, you wanna choose a path that you want to be on that path. Like when you're looking at the clock, you don't wanna say, you don't wanna be counting down the hours, but when do I get to leave work, right? You wanna be like, oh man, can I do just one more hour? Honey, I'm being late for dinner. You know, I'm just like, so to me, I'm like, the thought process of like, oh, dentist is good because they, you know, they have good hours. And I'm basically saying, I won't have to do it that much. Uh, to me, I'm like, that's not how to choose a career. You should choose a career because that's what you want to do. Like, you'd be excited to spend more time doing that, right? Not because, oh yeah, I only got to work 30 hours this week. That's way better than 
40 hours in another job, right? So, yeah, and I, and with, I understand, like, the comfort that comes with, you know, money and security, and a lot of times, I, like I was talking about, that's a trap. Uh, it's hard to get out of that. Once you get comfortable, uh, it's hard to move, you know, good is the enemy of great, so to speak. Um, but, yeah, thanks for sharing that, because I agree 100%. Like, passion is what's going to get you through. Like, like I, the, path, the path isn't always smooth, uh, but if the desire is there and the fire is there, then, you know, your path that you're carving out, you'll be able to stay on. You, you won't let some, some obstacle derail you on your own path. Any other questions? Kevin, that was great. Thanks for listening. <laughs>